Welcome, folks, to This Week in Hollywood. First up, the age-old question of who was the biggest superstar, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone? A question that's been going on since I was a kid has finally been answered, leaving no room for doubt. And it ain't, Mr. Screw Your Freedoms. There is a virus here. It kills people, and the only way we prevent it is to get vaccinated, to wear masks, to do social distancing, washing your hands all the time, and not just to think about, well, my freedom is being kind of disturbed here. No, screw your freedom. Now that Kamala is lost, Honor wants you to forget about the things he's done in the past, and who he supported. So now he's all in on the troops. Forget about politics. The huge megastar and son of a Nazi wants you to know he cares about our troops. Just forget about the whole screw your freedoms and who's been in charge the last four years taking things away from our troops. Kind of so shameful in a way that we have treated our veterans in such a bad way. And it doesn't matter if it's Democratic administration or Republican administration in Washington. They just never really have understood that the Veterans Administration is there to take care of the veterans. And so they're not, there's a lot of people that are working very hard to do that, but I mean, the top leadership, I think, fails in every administration. So I just want to make sure that they know I am at least thinking about them and I build homes for them and I bring food for them and stuff like that. Yeah, and I want to ask you about that because we have this whole issue with the land here at the VA and, you know, the housing and the lawsuits. And what's your feeling about that whole legal mismatch? Look, I, I've been living here in this area for decades. I've played golf on this nine-hole golf course that they have here. Beautiful. And I appreciate that they made a deal with the Brentwood School to go and give them some land so they can expand uh, for the kids and all that stuff. And all of that is good, but look, if you have a nine-hole golf course and you have veterans lying out there in front of the Veterans Administration property outside for years, then there's something wrong. So I think that it is better for them to just use this property in a wise way and to make this kind of like a, uh, if it is a transitional period or the, you know, the main uh, buildings, to provide housing for them in here and health care and medical care, everything to provide them with the stuff to show our respect for them and all this stuff. So this is, I think, what it is. So they should use this property for housing and for taking care of the veterans. And then the lawsuits and all that delay all of that. Well, yeah, of course, look, if there is good leadership in Washington, we wouldn't have this fight. They would just say, okay, we're going to build housing there because it's their property. So it's that simple. So I mean, it's like when the locals get involved and the state gets involved, the federal government is involved, they're fighting back, and it's all of this stuff. It is a shame. So what I'm saying is just that let's move forward with this whole thing and let's do it. So there you have it, folks. Arnold is tired of homeless veterans getting in the way of his golf game. Even though his candidate that he endorsed had four years to take care of this problem, let's stop playing politics and just get it done. <laughs> sure. Well, Rocky Balboa is about to show you why he's got a statue in the middle of Philadelphia. I'm in ball. And I'll just say this, and I mean it. When George Washington defended his country, he had no idea that he was going to change the world. Because without him, you can imagine what the world would look like. Guess what? We got the second George Washington. Congratulations! <laughs> How's Middle America reacting? Holy smokes, I didn't see that coming. Luckily for the left, this is just an isolated incident. I mean, if this caught on, it would show a cultural shift. And I, for one, know that's crazy talk. There's no way the culture could be shifting this fast. Well, hold on a second, I'm getting a message here. 
how many players? Wowzers, that's a lot of Trump dancing. But not everyone is having a good time right now. That I, I'd like to reframe the conversation. I think Bernie Sanders is wrong. I think the more relevant question actually is what is wrong with America? I think um, what is wrong with our country that the Republican Party would choose as a candidate and support a candidate who is an insurrectionist, who is an election denier, who is someone who is twice impeached, a 34 time convicted felon, um, someone who has been accused of alleged sexual misconduct by 26 women, uh, found liable for sexual abuse. Uh, what is wrong with this country that they would choose a message of divisiveness, of xenophobia, of racism, of misogyny, over a message of inclusiveness, a message for the people, by the people, but, of the it's people. That's what the problem is. It's the, the Republican vote. Party. Can I, can I, what's can wrong I with say America? Before, we can do a second. Holy Toledo. I thought her rant on blaming dumb white people for the election was bad. She decided to one-up herself. Well, I think everything she says is a blatant lie. And I find her overall demeanor unpleasant. But you gotta respect somebody with this kind of conviction. Hold on a second. She did what? <laughs> Looks like Sunny is joining a short list of other horrible celebrities leaving Twitter. Or X. Truly the cream of the crop of who gives a darn. Bye, Jamie Lee Curtis, and take your weird child art with you, hopefully to prison. But speaking of The View and former cast members, former fat co- I mean co-host of The View, Rosie O'Donnell, made some pretty unforgivable remarks about the current president's son. No one realized that Barron Trump made two heartbreaking sacrifices for his father. In 2016, comedian Rosie O'Donnell claimed that Barron Trump had autism. Because Barron rarely spoke in public and did not appear as lively as other children, many believed her. This deeply hurt Barron and Melania. After enduring this for some time, Melania finally broke her silence, refuting the claim in her autobiography and emphasizing that Barron does not have autism. In fact, Barron's silence stems from good upbringing and manners, which make him more composed than the average child. After all, it's hard to imagine the son of a president screaming and jumping around the White House. The other Trump children are the same. They hardly ever engage in idle chatter. Additionally, Barron's adolescence coincided with Donald Trump's time in office and his subsequent departure. A father's troubles always affect the family. And as the youngest son, Barron naturally had to be cautious with his words and actions to avoid further trouble. However, Melania never expected that Barron's good manners would be used as a reason to bully him. You hate to see it, folks. Picking on a kid because you don't like his dad. Making those kind of claims, you must be an expert in parenting. Let's see how Rosie handles her kids. I have five children and my youngest is a non-binary, beautiful human who told me first that her stuffies, their stuffies, were non-binary. And a year later told me, you know what I told you about my stuffies? I said, yeah, she said, they said, that's me too. And I said, welcome aboard, honey. And she said, um, are you non-binary? I said, no. I'm just like an OG lesbian. I mean, Wow, your daughter's stuffed animals told her what her pronouns are, and your reaction was, That's great, honey. I wonder how that worked out for you. Wow, crazy stuff. Well, that's movie news, folks. Hit that like button if you're new here. Give us a subscribe if you like what you see.